sorry if anyone's watching right now. Um, I'm just uh, making this um, making this public and sharing it to my group. I'll just be one second. Should have did this beforehand. <sighs> okay, post it to Facebook. Um. <clears throat> okay, actually, hold on. Camera good. Uh, yeah, camera looks good. I think. Um, okay, I'm gonna start off with a uh, cycle update just so this video is um, kind of primordially about the cycle update, so I don't have to do another one of these videos and then go to live Q and A. Um, okay, nine are watching now. I'll give it like 30 more seconds, let a couple more people join. Um, and then start it off with cycle up, uh, cycle update. How long has it been? Two minutes? Okay, it's been about two minutes, so I might as well start it uh, sooner rather than later. Okay, um, <clears throat> so before I start the, uh, the Q&A, um, I'm going to give a cycle update. I did it in my last video, but I didn't title it cycle update and it was a little bit into the video. So I'm going to do the cycle update um, right now at the beginning of this video for the people who uh, didn't get to uh, hear or see or wondering what has been going on with the cycle. So I'll do another kind of quick recap that some of you might have already heard. So um, about the three, the uh, week three in my cycle that I started, um, People who are following, you probably remember that I got sick. I got a um, uh, tonsillitis <clears throat> and I took antibiotics. So uh, my heart started going funny when uh, my tonsils uh, swelled up and uh, I took antibiotics and it, and it went away. My appetite was kind of shit and I was kind of failing on my cycle by then because of the antibiotics. But as soon as I stopped my antibiotics, my uh, heart went crazy, actually. Uh, my heart went, went up to um, uh, 150 and um, I had an AFib um, and a whole bunch of other stuff wrong with my heart. <clears throat> uh, I went to the hospital and basically they told me, you know, my heart was screwed. There's nothing I can do. I need to get on beta blockers and blood thinners uh, and stay on it. And I'm going to need a cardio revision, which is basically where they uh, restart your heart. And that never really fixes it. You have to keep going back and getting it uh, uh, redone and redone to throw your uh, sinus rhythm back in check. Uh, you know, AFib, your, um, your beating is off. So, um, yeah, that's basically what they told me. And <clears throat> I knew something else was going on just because it was too much of a coincidence where I know where infections like this, um, even with the tonsils that they, um, they can, that they can cause uh, massive issue, massive issues like internally, um, sorry, widespread, especially when it's bacterial and it lined up too much that as soon as my tonsils swelled up, that my heart started, uh, acting funny. So, um, you know, they told me, yeah, I'd go home, I have to take these drugs. They gave me some IV beta blockers while I was there and my heart rate came down. But when I went home, I took some magnesium and vitamin E on my own. <clears throat> I didn't want to jump right on the beta blockers and blood thinners because if I jump right on the beta thinners and blood blockers, I wouldn't know what was actually going, if something else was going wrong with my heart. So I wanted to figure it out on my own, at least for a little bit, just in case my heart wasn't permanently uh, screwed, which I didn't think it was. So um, I got back on antibiotics as well because it lined too much up of uh, it's too much of a, it lined way too much up with it being some type of infection. But they wouldn't test me for. It. I kept saying no, you know I, this has to be a infection. Really, my, why would my heart just go? You, you know, even though it can, but like it, it just didn't make sense. Got back on the antibiotics, uh, took magnesium and vitamin E to uh, help the AFib and the heart rate. And shortly after that. Um, I went back for two different uh, ECGs <clears throat> and when I went back for, and when I went back the third time for the ECG, everything was completely fine. Um, I had no more uh, SL uh, elevation. My AFib was gone. My heart rate was completely normal. Everything was perfectly fine. 
you know the scary thing about this is that you know if i'd have been somebody who hadn't known any better and just got on better blockers and blood thinners and just took that for the rest of my life and uh you know getting cardio vision thinking my heart is screwed meanwhile it was an infection who knows maybe i could even even died or something like this from the in, in, in infection right um so you know i've had to listen to them and didn't take this into my own hands you know who who knows where i would have been right now um yeah literally when i went back from my third ecg heart was completely fine no more afib no more nothing um literally and been perfectly fine since so that's what happened to my cycle i stopped it about around the third week because um the infection whatever it did to my heart <clears throat> um so yeah that that's what happened to the cycle so we only basically got about three weeks into it um i showed this in the last chat let me reshow it again where is it um should i have this prepared yeah, well, that's not what we want. Uh, where is it? Um, so here's the ECG. This was after when uh, I believe the beta blocker was already in me for a little bit. And um, my heart rate went down to 133. But it's, the, the machine, like this isn't the, when you get an ECG, it's not the doctor's note. This is what the machine is uh, picking it up as. They're saying a stroke, heart attack, prior, prior stroke or heart attack. Uh, basically, it was just a mess. Um, yeah, it, it literally was none of that. It was, um, so I'm not sure if you can see that. Kind of difficult. Um, yeah, anyway, so um, that's what it was. And everything is completely fine now. None of that happened. It was, yeah, a uh, complete clusterfuck. Uh, completely destroyed the cycle. But um, yeah, that's what happened. That's where we were. Um, I showed some pictures because I didn't end up getting to um, do a proper before and after where I was at three weeks. Uh, where did the pictures go? It's saved here. Um, I don't know what I did with the pictures. I think they're on this phone. Sorry, guys, just give me one second. Um, where are the damn pictures? They're not there. So guys, okay, just one more second. Uh, then we'll start the Q and A. Um, where the hell are those pictures that I took? Uh, maybe it's been screen. Oh, yeah, I think maybe I screenshotted them. <clears throat> uh, where are they? I had some pictures that I took around the third week mark. I know I, I showed them on uh, one of the live streams on the third week week mark actually. Um, Jesus, how many screenshots have I taken since? A lot of freaking screenshots. Okay, I, I oh no, never mind. Here's a before picture, so that'll be have to do. That'll have to be good enough. Um, oops. Sorry, guys. One more second. Okay, so um, here's basic. I'm not sure if you can see that. Here's basically. I'm waiting for it to see if it's getting in focus. Hide my face so the camera focuses on it. Here's basically the the before picture of the cycle, um, which I, I don't remember what weight I was, guys. What was I? Two ten. I think the cycle was. Um, <clears throat> where's any of the good pictures I took for? The goddamn after picture. Uh, and this was about the third week where I was, I don't know, 2.30 or something like that. I'm not sure if you can focus. I ignore the stupid crap on it, guys. Um, there's some more pictures I'll look for in a second. Um, I'm not sure if you can see that. Am I holding it properly? So that's where we got to about the third week. And I even even getting to the third week was, was pretty crappy, guys, because... I started feeling crappy a bit after the second week. That was when my tonsils started to swell up and I started eating less and things were just not going um, like, like they planned to be. But I can't remember what, what my weight was. Weight was. It was in the videos. I think I got to 2.30, so 20, no, maybe I got a little bit over to 2.30. Um, when I last checked, I've been, um, what was my weight? Um, 2.24, I think, like a, a few days ago. And I have not worked, sorry, I had one workout like a couple of days ago, but I had not worked out since. I've been eating like once a day from going back on the antibiotics and stuff. Yeah, it's I just, it's gone out the window basically. Um, but yeah, I'm feeling 100% better. So I plan to restart it soon. I'm gonna have my five weeks off, which I think my five weeks off is basically this week. Anyways, uh, since I stopped right around the third week, I have it in my phone somewhere. So 
I'm hoping to uh, get back on there. So um, yeah, there's the cycle update for you guys. Um, what happened? Uh, complete cluster. Fuck. Um, but yeah. All right. So let me start with a couple of questions. Um, Sup, man. Maybe stupid, but would like to know what topic you're most enthusiastic about and talk about. Can be anything. Um, so I'm not sure if you're you're in my groups or anything like that or follow me, but um, I, I, that's hard. that's a tricky question. You're making me uh, think really hard about this one. I really enjoy health and longevity, um, like f focusing on the most perfect diet and the perfect nutrients and everything combined in one that we need to live long, proper, and healthy. But then I also really love the aspect of it um, in relation to the most adequate way to have a healthy body composition, you know, building muscle, like how is potassium involved with insulin production and glycogen storage? How is vitamin A involved with protein synthesis? And and I, and I love knowing, figuring out the perfect diet for bodybuilding in the sense where it's like, um, pro protein uses up vitamin A for every gram of protein we eat. So if you're not pairing that high protein intake with adequate vitamin A intake, you're not getting the maximum out of your protein intake. And I love pairing all those nutrients um, all together to figure out, you know, what is the most, uh, the healthiest diet uh, all in, you know, like all in one really, and not just uh, muscle building, like I was saying with health, you know, what do we need for adequate health and what should we avoid and what shouldn't we avoid and if you follow my website on tn.com you go to my testimonials who, whoever hasn't uh, seen that yet you'll see i've cured a wide variety of uh diseases that pe pe people had uh for decades you know like uh crohn's patients who went through every specialist they could in their country and they've had horrible crohn's for you know 10 20 years and following you know my methods of dialing i've completely put them into rem remission zero inflammation um I've had people with a, a serious central a retinopathy where um, the he was losing his vision and um, uh, he went to the doctor and the doctor is saying, look, you're going to lose your eye. There's nothing we can do. All we can do is wait and you're going to lose your vision. Um, you know, that's my focus has always been on every single aspect to do with health and every single variety. So, you know, I we research whether it's every disease, every alignment, every illness and so on. And uh, example with the, the central, uh, central retinopathy there, um, instantly, you know, he came to me, he's like, look, do you, is there anything you can do for me? And his testimony is up on my uh, testimonials page. And you were instantly just from my research, you know, I knew what was going on. It's a fluid buildup. It, being, it can be caused by um, various different... Um, uh, various different mechanisms. It, it can be caused uh, nat naturally via your lifestyle and diet, or it can be caused via via the drugs you might be taking. Like um, there's cases of it from growth hormone use. There's cases of it from testosterone use. And the main mechanism behind it is, example, is um, high stress hormones with uh, high fluid retention. You know, the stress hormones will come with fluid retention, and it, it creates a. Uh, um, uh, a log of fluid retention behind the eye, which will start uh, cutting off your circulation, your vision, and so on. Um, and with a few simple diet alterations, um, uh, so a, a few, like example, uh, magnesium is proven to uh, inhibit cortisol and lower the stress hormones, It's help, which will help with water retention. So basically all we did was up his magnesium and uh, up his uh, potassium a little bit, and his eye, his eye is 100% fully recovered, no more issue anymore. And, uh, you know, that's something that he went to the doctor and the doctor said, look, nothing you do, you're going to lose your vision. And, you know, a normal person would have just went home and been like, hey, I, I'm screwed. And, you know, his vision would have went. So uh, my focus has always been hugely health orientated. And like I said, when you see my testimonials, I haven't updated them in a while. But there's a lot more from just so many different uh, health issues, alignments, whether it's hair loss, you know, like I said, the vision, Crohn's, colitis, so many people that just, you know, they had no, you know, nothing was, they couldn't fix it not like most people would know how to fix themselves um you know but no doctor could help them either because you know doctors are more just band-aiding the symptoms right oh you have an issue here that let's cover up the, the the issue as good as we can but not actually fix the root cause uh multiple different autoimmune diseases um, i've uh put into full remission multiple different uh, hashimoto's thyroiditis cases um yeah all sorts of things like that so health longevity and you know overall health alignments with health is what I'm really passionate about and I and I love to um uh get into it and fix or whatever uh, you want to call it um sorry guys that was a long spiel there um I need a drink um damn sorry for blowing up your inbox hope you're doing better 
Jade, uh, no, no problem at all. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing better and I'm getting things back. <laughs> I'm getting things back on track. Just uh, catching up on some things. It, it was honestly very scary uh, with the heart issue. I was, you know, because I, you know, obviously I can't do some tests on myself to see if it's a, a, a pericarditis and stuff like that. If, if it's a, you know, viral bacteria related in my heart. So I was freaking out myself. I was getting really depressed too. It was like, what's going on? Is my heart gonna be screwed? Like, like what am I, what am I gonna do? Like, I, I was really scared. But I know because I fixed multiple people's health issues uh, before too. Uh, a guy that had a similar issue, his heart. He has a random AFib, and he's done like four cardio revisions in the past month. His heart rate goes up to three hundred, and within like a week, I fully fixed him. His he has he has a, no more AFib. He hasn't needed a cardio revision. His heart is fully fine and healthy. So like you know, I knew I know how to fix a lot of these issues but you know at the same time is it something I couldn't fix or uncontrollable I wouldn't know and that was something I was investigating and fixing on myself cognitive decline on cycle TRT due to low DHEA pregnant progesterone thoughts um I would say I don't see that being the uh, main causative factor with cognitive decline in people well, I mainly see with TRT, even at TRT doses is estrogen. I can't tell you how many guys that I told to, whether it's naturally or with an AI, I know it's a fad, you know, against AI today. Yeah, having low estrogen is bad, but doesn't mean AIs are bad. Um, going too low and uh, going too high with the AI and crushing your estrogen is bad, yes. But, you know, high estrogen alone is proven to be a, a factor of heart disease and so on. Anyways, going off topic, cognitive de decline like 99 times out of 100, I find is purely your estrogen is too high. And I cannot list you how many guys that are doing a legitimate TRT dose 100 milligrams, which studies show that even 100 milligrams to put you the higher range of estrogen, that as soon as they lower their estrogen, even a little bit that they, this massive brain fog is lifted. Um, it's funny, every time somebody has this issue, I'll invite them to a group chat of people I fix and they literally say the same things on TRT. They felt so freaking dumb. Like they had this massive brain fog and they just could not function and lower the action a little bit and they, they're functioning again. Um, so yeah, um, again, it, it could, all those hormones are involved in it. Absolutely. This is why I also like just prefer cycling. I only like short cycles, four to six weeks, get on, suffer the consequences that you will uh, take from a cycle, but do all the preventative measures like vitamin K2, cod liver oil, and so on. Do everything you can to prevent the, the damage from steroids and, um, and then get off and recover. Um, so yeah, that is why I even, that's why I don't like blasting and cruising. Um, and a little bit more about that. Um, heart disease is fully uh, preventable. Same with uh, um, LH, LVH, and it's and it's reversible with items like K2 and magnesium and vitamin A. That's proven in studies. Those are a staple in all in all my cycles. If you go back to some of my old posts on my Facebook page back like five, six, seven years ago, you'll see like I was probably one of the first telling people take K2, uh, take K2. But you know, I've always made sure to. Tell people to balance it with each nutrients because k2 will increase clotting you also need vitamin e to help prevent that so um so yeah um where am i going uh, how is libido during debo only cycle and afterwards most people have a fine libido on, on debo only but certain drugs regardless you know if all your other hormones are fine like you know debo will give you adequate estrogen and so on certain drugs just cause a random libido loss and you know some of it can be linked to uh neurotransmitter related issues as well with, with certain steroids uh debo does have a risk i found in some people for a, a minor libido loss uh so that can happen uh, a lot of times you need to go by some anecdotal experiences, especially with people running items solo. So we know exactly what's causing what, cause there's not, you know, uh, in-depth studies on a lot of these drugs. So that, that can be a slight issue for some. Uh, when I try to donate blood to keep my iron levels in check, the blood doesn't flow out. I take five milligrams of vitamin K2 every day and raw cheese and liver, uh, with both my meals. Is it the K2 causing the blood donation? Uh, absolutely could be. And also, uh, if you're dehydrated, that can be causing it too. Sure, you're getting uh, adequate fluids, but not just adequate fluids because you drink water um, without electrolytes. You will, you know, you'll if you haven't had a good amount of electrolytes in you already, you'll flush out those electrolytes and the water will just pass right through you and you'll make yourself more dehydrated. K2 always needs to be balanced with vitamin E, as I said above. Um, if you're taking K2, you're putting yourself at a higher risk for uh, clotting, which stairs will do. Also, you want to balance it with vitamin E. Very important. I see nobody talk about this. It is very important. And that's why you see my, uh, if you read my articles on my website, you'll see, you know, I'm, if it fits your macros videos, if you watch, I, I mentioned the importance of vitamin E there. Um, so important. 
ensure you're getting a healthy diet of adequate volume nutrients. You're having to supplement K2 because we can't get it in our diet as well today, but you can, you need to ensure the balancing nutrients are with it, like vitamin E. Um, that's why I always really push a high micronutrient dense diet. Um, where am I going? What do you think about blended food about 5 a.m. then going back to sleep so I don't have to eat so, uh, so late to sleep better and get in calories? Um, depends. Is this going to disrupt your sleep? If so, it's not worth it. Um, a better way what I would prefer, and this is what I do, uh, I do on myself. Um, as you know, you know, I'm a really big advocate eating most of your calories early in the day and nothing late at night because that will really disrupt sleep in almost everyone. I prefer to tell people to eat more nutrient dense foods um per you know per gram per size whatever um it and it also depends on your um your prone how prone you're to fat gain and stuff like that but you know also the right food choices it, it makes a difference um most people who are lacking calories and need to get that meal in and so on they're really just lacking fat if you see my video about my best bulk ever where i gained 50 pounds 25 pounds muscle memory 25 pounds new weight is because I ate a crap load of fats. Fats are so nutrient dense, you're not taking up a lot of volume. Um, eat more fats would be my first thing if you're not eating enough fats already. Sorry guys, um, fats is so important. Um, that's what I would say, try and do first. Um, <clears throat> in Finland, it's not allowed to donate blood if using steroids. Uh, I think that's almost everywhere. Um, but most people, you know, they go in there and they say, are you using steroids? You have to fill out a little survey and most people just say, no, I'm not using steroids <laughs> and they donate blood. Um, question Hashimoto's or however you pronounce it best way to support and possibly recover from it. Um, okay, let me try and summarize this. So I'm not talking for half an hour. <clears throat> Um, so as I said, I've cured, uh, multiple different, uh, uh, autoimmune diseases. I've never failed yet. The main thing with autoimmune diseases is that your body is, it, it's attacking, uh, that specific organ or tissue in your body, right? When it is attacking the specific organ or tissue in the body is because you are ingesting something that your body sees as foreign and it will attack that protein and you know, your thyroid and stuff like that. It's made up of protein. Your body will go in a, for, for some reason, it'll decide I'm going to attack this, this protein target too. I'm going to attack it and I'm going to, uh, you know, destroy it. So, um, <clears throat> as we know in studies, um, you know, a plethora of studies out there on, um, uh, on, uh, whether it's Hashimoto's or autoimmune disease in general, sorry, I got distracted. Um, the main two things I ensure everybody must get out of their diet and, you know, it's kind of like a fad today. Oh, don't eat dairy, don't eat grains. And, you know, I've been a big, uh, pro of this of a long time but for a very specific reason um these are one of the not not the only two but the main two um uh protein items uh dairy protein and then um uh wheat protein in general that is what your body will see in people's autoimmune diseases as a foreign um as a foreign protein and cause it to attack other things in their bodies nine times out of ten i have people completely cut this out of their diet fully um, one hundred percent, and their autoimmune disease will go into remission. However, not always. Another big issue of this is um, every time we we overcook protein foods, we also get the issue of um, our body seeing as as a toxic protein in our body. Some people have to go very strict, and they're only allowed to steam their meats. They're not allowed to take their meats over um, one hundred and ten degrees Celsius, um, uh, due to the protein content and. Um, that is, those are the three main issues in your body not attacking itself anymore and you seeing uh, antibodies drop. It is very hard for certain people to stick to, especially people who grew up on a Western diet. Um, <clears throat> but that is essentially the, the main root causes of uh, auto, autoimmune diseases um, with it attacking your own tissues. Um, hmm, 250T... 200p, no AI, maybe should test some ADEX. Um, I think that was the estrogen person with the, the, the brain fog. Uh, what did I miss? Any suggestions or protocol for a DHES deficiency? Um, yes and no, uh, that depends. Are you on steroids? Um, that would be the first question because, you know, different routes. What would you do to cut camel stout if you were pretty fat? Summer coming up, want to stop feeling so fat coming from strongman, lower the fat and up the cardio. Uh, for those of you who don't know, if you're new, uh, camel style, um, if you go to my Facebook page, Tiana Talking Camel, 
I'm a Web310.com. Everybody, uh, um, everybody calls me Camel. Um, it's from my old Avatar and GH15 forums. I was the talking camel. Um, so uh, so I'm not sure if you're on my website or in my Facebook group. I'm assuming you are because you can camel style. Basically, yeah, follow my guidelines, you know, in the group or on the web. Uh, if you're on the website, check out my uh, on the forums. I have exact like more meal plan guidelines on showing people exactly what to eat in the sense of, you know, by giving you variety example how. Um, so I'll break it down. And this is on, on the website for the for the meal plans. Anyways, I'll say example, have three meals as white fit. I give you, you know the best results for the best results possible. You know, you don't have to fall to a T. But yeah, <clears throat> medium high protein, medium high carbs and moderate fats is how I like to explain it. I know very vague. Uh, so some examples, keep phosphorus as high as you can. Pick all the meats with the highest phosphorus content and the highest polyunsaturated fat content. As you know, in studies, as I had on, on the website, that um, phosphorus, uh, phosphorus when people are dieting, when they up the phosphorus, it prevented metabolism shutdown. Phosphorus when calories, protein, carbs, and fats were all equated. Phosphorus, um, it caused more muscle gain. So it'll prevent fat loss. It increases fat loss and it helps muscle gain. Phosphorus in polyunsaturated fat uh, rich meats. Um, so fish is one of my favorite ones. Um, this, so there's kind of truth to fish thinning the skin. Polyunsaturated fat was helping to show thin the skin and so on. So there actually is truth to that. I have the fish thin your skin article on my site. Um, so yeah, fish whenever you can, specifically white fish to there, the more higher in phosphorus. Um, it's, and carb, yeah, so high protein, high carbs essentially. Um, you know, choose your carb choices that are nutrient dense so you're getting all the benefits you know, preserving muscle, glycogen, and you know, everything else, like I said a million times, how potassium helps. So fish, potatoes, squash, buckwheat, uh, you know, brown rice, anything that, but non-processed carbs, you're not doing your body any good. And then keeping your fats, majority of them as polyunsaturated fatty acids. So seeds like sunflower seeds, hemp seeds, and so on. Um, and that is the, the general basis of, it. as for macros, um, as you know, I have lots of people that will eat a lot more because they're eating the right foods that are proven to prevent fat gain and not go towards fat gain. They can eat a lot more and they lose fat while eating more. Um, I mentioned last video how Jordan Peters, I helped him recently. He was coming off a cut, a cut and started a bulk. Um, when he started the bulk, he, you know, he was gaining weight. I had him up his fats by 80 grams while upping his other foods. And because those fats were primarily from polyunsaturated fatty acids, he started losing fat again on his bulk. So your food choices matter. As you know, if you follow the, uh, the camel ways, you know, my way, um, seeds, a little bit of fruit every meal, uh, lots of fish if you can, high phosphorus, high polyunsaturated fat meats and nutrient dense carbs as your carb sources. Uh, again, I have the full breakdown. Um, if you, I, obviously I think you follow my ways on my site or whatever, cause you said camel. So, uh, reread, re uh, what I posted on there for like more, uh, like better examples with uh, pictures and stuff. You don't think long-term serum is worse than Blast and Cruise in the constant up and down in TE levels. So one, my question here is what is so dangerous, but constant, uh, up and down T levels, um, Two, you don't have to have constant up and down T levels because if you do PCT correctly, you won't have that constant up, up, up and down. Three, absolutely 100%. When you take TRT, you're shutting down dozens of various other hormones that are so important for like uh, just everything, whether it's cognitive function or inflammation and so on. You know, tests will lower your cortisol, super important for controlling inflammation, uh, your, your progesterone, your, your, your pregnenolone. Your um, it, every little neural transmitter spouting off from from there. Um, yeah, absolutely. TRT is horrible. That's why you go on any TRT form, you'll see people have this honeymoon period where they're feeling great, and the majority are feeling like death, and they're looking for a cocktail of the next drug of taking cortisone and and you know adulterone because they're just feeling like shit while their body's shutting down. And there's studies on animals of this showing uh, adrenal insufficiency and adrenal shutdown from taking long-term steroids. So absolutely, I freaking hate TRT. It's the last option I would ever suggest to anyone. And if I do suggest it, something like a serum would be in there. Um, yeah. Um, what can you tell us about supplementing DHEA plus DIM the past 40 year, past 40 year olds as TRT? As TRT, ab absolutely horrible. Um, I, I'd rather you try and restart your hormone production with something like uh, a proper PCT like Coleman. Here's the thing, even though you're old, I've had countless people do so many PCTs and failed PCTs and um, 
with but they weren't having the right nutrients to restart themselves you know i i insanely upped the fat and uh ensured they got a quality diet and what do you know after multiple failed pcts their test levels finally restarted and it shot through the roof doesn't matter their age you had one guy have a thousand ng testosterone from restarting his uh hormones uh properly after all of his failed pcts um so i would suggest that first it dim i hate it it's very stupid i'd rather use calcium deglucrate and vitamin e as natural anti-estrogen control dim is a androgen receptor blocker and if you uh if you know anything blocking your androgen receptors completely destroys the benefits of your androgens dht and testosterone uh, i freaking hate them um but yeah uh dang man i opened it uh up to anything could be skateboarding mma chess whatever and you still talk about diet this is your passion man good to see another person who loves what they do yeah absolutely like uh, i explain to people for the past like i don't know like 16 years now maybe um i've just been obsessed with diet nutrition and this and that and like some days i'd wake up in bed you know first thing i do is pick up my phone and i just start reading researching uh research papers and like i almost wouldn't leave bed some days and i'd do it like you know for 24 hours straight staying up all night like i just research and research and research is like this uh huge addiction um and i've been doing that for like 16 years so yeah that's why i'm not sure if you're in my facebook group but if you have that's why you see people ask me so many random questions and you see so many people that i've helped with random stuff like you know like you mentioned the eye or Hashimoto's this or that and yeah so much uh, yeah just random shit that you know people have had issues for years and it's like okay here let me fix you all oh, a week later okay wow i'm fixed i had an issue for 10 years and you fixed me in a week like you know my obsessive research yeah I, I don't know why but i'm addicted to it hugely um not much else that i am very interested in when I was younger, I used to like uh, MMORPGs, um, uh, but and then you know throughout the years, I like play for like a month or so. Think, oh, okay, I want to have some fun going like a old MMORPG again. And it's like I don't know, it lasts like a month. I just can't uh, stick to it. Uh, but yeah, they're not. I don't know, not much else. Uh, hey, Tian, any advice for someone with extremely uh, high sim 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 sympathetic drive? Sorry. Um, yes and no. Um, something that PM me your diet. Um, so absolutely, but you know, can PM me your diet. And if you're taking any drugs and or supplements, um, to see what it is, whether sometimes people can have a specific, uh, new, you, you know, example, all your neurotransmitters related into that, right? Whether it's, uh, you could be taking something like BCAA, which will deplete your, uh, your tyrosine, uh, uh, your dopamine and stuff like that. Right. You could be taking a specific supplement or diet. Certain issues like this, it's better to reverse engineer where it's like, let me see everything. Okay, I, I see this could be an issue, uh, depleting this or increasing, you know, acetylcholine and so on. So um, it's, it's the issues like this instead of just being like, okay, take this, this and this. It may help you or it may not. It is much easier to uh, re reverse engineer than um, just throw uh, random, random suggestions. I see a lot of people taking, where to go? What crap? Okay. I see a lot of people taking aspirin and benefit uh, and benefit for it in bodybuilding. Uh, I don't like it. Um, over time, silicate sensitivity can, can build up. Uh, people start having digestive issues and stuff like that. Hair loss even. Um, I don't like it. Um, people are taking an example for take vitamin E. Ensure you're getting a rich vitamin E. Vitamin E will help prevent any AFib. It'll help prevent clotting. It'll do everything vitamin aspirin will do, but healthier and better for you and safer for you without the side effects and many more benefits. Uh, so no, I, aspirin is stupid, I hate it. Uh, but vitamin E, as you've seen study, will have the same benefits as well, like actually in studies for, um, you know, clotting and everything else. Um, N of R plus test for a second cycle, thoughts for cutting. Um, so I have an article where I list, pick your cycles, you know, no matter what you use at the end of the year, you're not going to look any different from the guy who used something different. I'm sorry, but it's just a fact. Maybe a couple pounds here and there or something like that. Pick your cycles based off the side you want to avoid. Somebody who comes to me with hair loss, for example, myself, I would say absolutely do not touch chest, absolutely do not touch Anavar. If you're prone to hair loss, it is going to scalp you. If you do not get hair loss, uh, it's an okay cycle. I would rather something like T-Bowl in there, uh, but very high risk hair, hair, hair loss cycle if you're prone to hair. Um, I would much prefer something like DECA and uh, T-Ball uh, myself. And even if I didn't have hair loss, I would rather DECA and T-Ball as well anyways. But either way, it's a good cycle. You're gonna see the same, result, the same results at the end of the year. Base your cycles off the side you want to essentially avoid. Um, 
Do you think running oral D ball at a five milligram dosage would still yield good results with minimal side effects? Uh, if you check my oral only cycle video or my hair safe steroids, I mentioned how D ball basically at any dose is so side free. Uh, liver toxicity, old pros use it for years, upwards 7,000 milligrams a day. You know, half my following uses it 200, 300 milligrams a day for months on end. The gyno risks, people who get increased gyno, people who use adding Debo to a test cycle, you're not going to see sides from Debo, man. Like, almost insanely um, rare, impossible. Uh, five milligrams a day is not enough to replace your androgenic or estrogenic function in studies for a TRT dose that's used at 15 milligrams a day. So 15 milligrams a day, day minimum is what I suggest. And if you're going to shut yourself down, since you won't get the side effects of it, I would minimum run 30 milligrams. You're putting yourself at risk and make, make it worth it. How many calories should you cut when cutting with Anivar? It, totally individual. As I just explained earlier, I don't want to go too much into detail and bore people with the same thing. Um, go to my website, tan.com, read some of my articles on dieting. You know, it's free under the articles, uh, at least like, you know, the main ones. Um, and I mentioned how uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids, when people ate 700 calories extra a day, polyunsaturated fatty acids, they went towards almost entirely muscle growth, where saturated fats went entirely towards uh, fat gain. So you don't have to starve yourself as much as calories, but make the right food choices. This is what will help determine how much fat you lose, you're preventing your thyroid from shutting down, how much muscle you keep, and so on. Um, and there's lots of studies on body comp and the different uh, choices in food you make. Don't focus on calories so much, focus on the food con content. L look at the protein studies, as example, which was repeated three times. In the last study, they uh, had people overfeed 900 extra calories a day than the, than the control group of protein, and they actually lost more fat and gained a little bit more muscle. Calories in versus calories out works to the sense that you basically starve people and make them eat less, but it's not this closed circuit uh, mechanism, whatever you want to call it. And this is why we have studies where people overfeed and they can gain just muscle and they can gain uh, lose more fat. It is not about calories in versus calorie out. It's so outdated and I hate it, it's stupid. Um, uh, do you have any uh, experience with client who fasts during Ramadan? What advice about nutrition training PDs would you give during? Um, <clears throat> Well, it depends on what you're doing, right? You know, if you're cutting or bulking, um, essentially, you know, eat as much as you can when you do eat. I'm not sure what's the, the goal about it. Um, I don't even know if you could take electro, you know, electrolytes. Um, I would say it's not too hindrance. Just don't plan to bulk around that time. And then, you know, when it depends on what you're doing. Right? If you're bulking, then try and just pound back very heavy nutrient-dense foods in, in the times you can eat, stuff like chicken wings and stuff like that, which are immensely dense with calories. You know, I bulked off just three meals a day because I ate two meals a day of chicken wings and getting like five, 6,000 calories. Nutrient-dense foods. Um, yeah. What do you think about like Irish people in the history with dare use I can get raw grass fed where I'm at so it sucks it's just no one can actually handle dairy it's my favorite um here's the thing we do know stuff like um the different uh, breeds of cows right um uh, what is it uh, type A and type oh my god what, what is the different milk the the different breeds of t like cows do produce di di different protein in the milk uh, which has different eff effects on our bodies, you know, our, you know, genetic engineering of our cows, you know, whatever has produced different um, uh, proteins in our milk. So to say that a more natural bred uh, animal might not cause the dangers of dairy, n nobody knows. We do know though, example, but is this from the way we bred cattle? We don't know, but example with the fat, even if it's low fat dairy, we see um, um, in boys and men that when they consumed milk, um, that it, it uh, blunted their testosterone, blunted their LH and raised their estrogen levels. There's not a single person where I didn't have them drop dairy altogether and you know their acne cleared up, their estrogen symptoms went away and, and their skin was better. So um, you know we don't know if it's from the milk we're drinking now and if uh, you know, um, a safer cow version of it and unpasteurized and so it could be safer. There's no real study. There is some studies on it showing, yes, some difference in health effects, but we don't know all if it, you know, would fix all the issues with dairy. That is one thing we, we just don't know. And, uh, yeah, n nobody can answer that at this date for sure. 
I felt more lean when replacing Debo with Rin so on the cycle. Similar strength benefit to my experience. Any incident that is that your experience? Uh, the harsher the androgen generally in studies in real world experience is that you see more fat loss. So that would be expected. Plus Debo will add a little water weight where Winsor is going to dry out. So you're going to look immensely leaner. Um, as for actual fat loss, um, it's not going to be significant. You probably just lost the water weight and you're like, okay, I'm, you know, this is a leaner item. Um, how would you go about running a DECA only TRT uh, plus phase? I'm not sure what you mean there, replacing T dose with DECA dose or what? Um, you will need a little bit higher DECA no matter what, about 200 milligrams is what I, uh, you normally would and or suggest. Although some people will suggest something like 100 milligrams DECA and 20, 30 milligrams T, maybe even 50 milligrams T. Um, a very individual. Uh, if you're doing DECA only, you need to ensure you're eating adequate fats. Most people, when they're too blunt, it's because of this stupid bodybuilder phase where your fats are so blunt and you're not making enough estrogen. And don't fully go by E2 because DECA makes mostly E1 and that will still replace some of the functions of E2. So you want to go by total estrogens as well with DECA as TRT. Um... How frequent should I inject DECA per week? Uh, if you see the actual studies on the chart, even with long Easter uh, nandrinal decanate, it actually spikes very high in 24 hours. I still think it's, it's best to do, um, you know, like three times a week, but you absolutely can, can get away with it twice a week as well. Um, uh, hey, Tan, how do you make such a, a, a meal with 400% of your daily vitamins and minerals? I forgot about this one. I was supposed to do this one before I came on my live. Um, let me. Uh, I'm not sure if this is gonna bore you guys if I try if I try and do this on my phone. Um, sorry, guys. One second. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and I'll try and talk just so you guys aren't bored. I'm gonna try and do because I said you can get all of your. Um, micronutrients with just a uh, one meal a low one low calorie meal i had this it's so funny i had this argument with facebook this guy after i posted my if if your macros video he's apparently this top coach and he trained uh steve cook and stuff like this um and uh he lost it on me he's like you're you're an idiot you, you can't get all your vitamins or minerals uh in a diet you have to supplement you have to do this and like you you no matter what you'll never get everything and this and that and he's like it's impossible like he just argued with me the tooth and nail he just went ape shit on me he eventually ended up blocking me because i kept you know proving him wrong with stuff but it was just ridiculous like how um <clears throat> small-minded uh some people can be so i'm going to throw this together for you kind of quickly like without too much thought. It would depend on how boring you, you, you guys get. I don't know. <clears throat> so um, every different cut of meat, example, will have different micronutrient content, okay? Um, so it depends on also what you're trying to get calorie-wise, right? Like fish will be a bit, a bit less uh, calories, but they will have uh, better micronutrient profiles um, for, for what you're getting. So example, uh, salmon is usually a good one. Uh, so I will do salmon for the meat. Um, and again, it depends on how we're going about this, how bodybuilder style we're making it or how orientated we're making it. Um, let's get like 50 grams of protein uh, from salmon. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. Uh, let's, one or two. Here's the, here's the thing, right? Some people, they don't want to eat this way, but it's like this is a better way because, you know, I'll say have two cups of vegetables minimum every meal. Um, but yeah, again, some people don't want to eat that way. Um, like I can really mess with this and make it like, absurd and make it a way that you wouldn't eat but make it very low calories still um it just depends on how crazy how crazy you know I'd, I'd want to uh go with this um okay what should i add here let me add uh, where are we i'll cheat a little bit and add this quickly just 10 grams um <clears throat> okay where are we I wish I had a little bit there. Um, uh, what should we add for? You know what? We'll, we'll do the two cups of we'll do the two cups of the vegetables for that. But then we need a little bit of um. Okay, hold on. Let me check. I think cabbage or cauliflower. We we'll go with next cabbage. Where are we at? One cup. Um, no, that's too low. There's cauliflower. Um, so one cup, where are we? Let's do a little too. Mike, do you want to do seeds? 
Yeah, let's put something in. I think cheetah. Oh, my God. Let's do two tablespoons. That's going to jack up our calories a little bit. <clears throat> Why is it B1 so low? I do, sorry, I don't think something is picking up uh, for what I'm doing. Yeah, it's not picking up all of them. Um, where are we? Vitamin K, good. Calcium is pretty high. So this this one's quickly thrown together. This is with um, 50 grams of, of protein from salmon, uh, two cups of spinach, um, making it simple, um, two tablespoons of chia seeds, and 10 grams of uh, liver. The liver doesn't need to be there. I was tossing for the B vitamins, but it doesn't need to be any be in there. It is 550 calories. Um, I'm gonna mess mess with this again just to sh just to uh, sh show you guys a little bit more. Yeah, I need to take the liver out because the vitamin A is too high. But um, I'm gonna show you uh, put it in front of my face. So almost everything is met there. I'm gonna mess with it a second and change it a bit. But again, this is from 550 calorie guys. I'm not sure if you could see that. Um, <clears throat> ignore some of them don't don't pick up like certain uh in-depth ones like the specific types of vitamin e that won't pick up so the ones that are empty it's just that it's not picking it up on chronometer because the data isn't uh input it from it um <clears throat> and then here is our main minerals um so basically almost everything is met um and again this is with one meal at, at 550 calories here guys um so it depends on how much I wanted to cheat because, you know, a lot of vegetables are very low calories and same with salmon, it's very low calories. I could cheat and uh, mega dose the spinach, mega dose the, uh, the, the salmon and get like insane numbers with keeping it at 500 calories. And again, like I'm saying, this is cheating in a sense where, you know, picking the Pacific foods. But if you can get 100% RDA from 500 calories and that's not me even cheating that much by eating salmon and some spinach, I didn't even add... Um, uh, a low nutrient dense carb source like like a squash um that so if you times three that you know let's say you're eating 1500 calories a fairly low calorie cut which is you know a little bit too low for most people um you're going to get all of them are going to be uh you know skyrocketed high um so ma main things that i like to suggest people for your nutrients is uh pork in fish, uh, usually a lot more high nutrient uh, content than um, most other meats in your vegetables. There's endless vegetables that you can pick when you're on a calorie restricted diet that is very low calories that will jack up your nutrients, whether it's you're needing your um, uh, potassium or um, B vitamins and so on. And then uh, you for calcium and stuff like that, a lot of the minerals, uh, specific vegetables you, you'll get it from, but also uh, chia seeds is a nice little hack which gives you some good polyunsaturated fatty acids um but yeah that that is a quick thing um if you want i'll read a couple other questions and then i can pull up some ones where i actually get like double that with just 400 calories um where was i what is the ai that is hair safe for pcd i'm using clomin and because of pep peptide right now uh our mididex is the most safe is absolutely bar none our, our romazin is an androgenic in and of itself and that's why people's hair usually gets raped raped uh with it Tian, are you talking about Jordan Peterson? Is that who you're referenced as a university guy in Toronto? No, uh, Jordan Peters, uh, uh, Google him or, or Instagram him. He He's a, a pretty famous bodybuilder. <clears throat> uh, twice a week with Deckett is good, works great. Understand, thank you. Hey Tian, what's your thoughts on Eki Place? Great drug, you know, it makes you immense hardness. It, 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 I, I think it's an amazing drug. Um, but comes with immense sides. 75% of people in my experience get libido loss and get anxiety from it. So I almost never suggest it and uh, pretty bad on hair loss. So it's great drug, but not worth the sides almost to anyone. Uh, after stopping Elantis protocol, would you lower the amount of carbs? I was on 20 IU Elantis and soon after dropping it for a day, I was very sleepy that day. Any relation? Uh, maybe your insulin sensitivity was a little bit hit, but um, that was you. Uh, lower the carb. T test your blood sugar levels. Maybe your insulin sen insulin sensitivity is a little bit hit. If so, you're just eating in, in proper diet. Uh, up the potassium and up the magnesium, and I promise you, within a day, uh, your blood sugar levels will be fine. Every form and YouTuber says Anabar is hair safe. Uh, I know they do, but this is a funny thing I always tell people. You go on any Facebook group and stuff like that. I like Facebook groups better because you can see people's picture. Everybody goes, no, Anavar, Anavar is hair safe. I've never had hair loss in my life. You click on their picture and they're thinning severely. Like, they're just in huge denial. 
Um, this is why I go by my anecdotal experience for like, I've been known as a hair loss guy for like a decade now. If you go to ten.com, check my testimonials, you see a couple of people where I completely reverse their hair loss. Um, out of my thousands and thousands of followers for a decade, Anovar is not freaking hair safe. It is not. It is people call Anovar hair safe because it has a lower androgenic rating, just like just like Winstrol has a low androgenic rating and it scalps people's hair. So um, no, it is not hair safe. I cannot tell you how many people that lose hair on a hundred milligram CRT and just any low dose drug and they take Anovar and they freaking lose hair. It is not hair safe. People are basing it off of a bro science myth and or rat studies on prostate. We have no relation to um, uh, scalp tissue. Um, um, if you do them, DECA, DVOL test cycles, take that DVOL early, not in the end of the cycle. I took ones in the end and never ever again had to stop the whole cycle. I don't know what, the, uh, what that is in relation to. Um, Cycles, I only like four, uh, six week cycles anyways, because the engine didn't stop working by then. Um, studies prove this, even in, lo even in long Easter steroids like DECA, all the gains are within the first six weeks. That's all well proven in studies. Oral PEDs versus injectable, which do you prefer? Um, ne neither, in a, in a sense, it all depends on the user. As I said earlier, I have an article on my site of how to pick your cycles and base it around the sides you want to avoid, because in the end, no drug is going to make a difference in your physique. Um, so yeah, um, Orals, I love d -ball, a great, I, I have hair loss, uh, I, sorry, I'm prone to hair loss, so I'll pick the drugs that don't cause hair loss, and that's what it, most of my followers and clients are. So DECA and d will always be a staple. Um, example benefits of DECA and d I won't run d because it causes me appetite loss, um, and it uh, ruins my sleep, and it does it for a lot of people. I like to be able to, I don't like to eat all throughout the day, I hate wasting my time. So I like to eat just three meals. And when I like to eat my three meals, I like them to be big meals. And Devo will uh, ruin my appetite, even when I'm running proper deuces of Tutka and Oxbile and so on, everything to help prevent the bile flow being impaired. Still get appetite loss and I cannot eat as good to gain as off of me. And I'm, food is number one, end of story. No drugs will make you grow. I have mega dose, tons of people mega dose, drugs will not make you grow. So d ball, I love it, but I, it's not worth the appetite loss. So it all depends on the person. Um, if you can handle D-ball, absolutely go ahead and run it. it. It's a favorite. Um, but, you know, so they both have their ups and downs. Deck is a little bit weaker, but you end up getting more results because you can actually eat on it. But that might not be you. This is me. Um, so it's an individual. Will D-ball cause gyno at 15 milligrams a day? Um, in my experience, uh, an almost, it is insanely, insanely rare. This is why you see all the old 70 pros who admit to and doctors commenting that they use thousands of milligrams a day. Half my following who uses hundreds of milligrams a day of D-ball, who, um, who used to run, let's say hundred milligrams of testosterone and got gyno, they cannot get gyno off D-ball no matter the dose. Highly unlikely that you will, but yeah, it's a little bit possible. How would you use trends since it doesn't convert to estrogen uh, with test, DECA, any other compound? Uh, use it with anything that makes estrogen. Uh, Trend and D-ball is a very great combo. Yeah, you can use it with test. Yeah, you can use it with DECA. Base your cycle off the sides you want to avoid. If it was me, um, and uh, you know, it's very gyno prone, I wouldn't run test, uh, cause Trend will just enhance the gyno effects. Um, I would use DECA or D-ball. However, I wouldn't use Trend anyways, cause hair loss. Um, what is that? If one wanted to do four weeks on, four weeks off, wouldn't NPP be better, uh, than DECA since there is more androgen receptor reset? Yes and no. <clears throat> um, yeah, if you're going to do four weeks off, absolutely, I, I go for NPP. If you're doing DECA, I like five to six weeks off. So yeah, um, and it just depends on the user's preference. You don't want to pin so often, go with DECA, and it goes a little bit uh, longer off. <clears throat> Debo is best used to kickstart the cycle. If you take it late in the cycle, you already have so much stuff running in you that guy knows much higher probability. <clears throat> Debo is best used to kickstart cycle if you take it late in the cycle. Um, well, again, my thing is you don't run past six weeks. Uh, endless studies have shown now that 90% uh, of the strength and size gains is the first six weeks. So if you're running D-ball past six weeks or any drug past six weeks, you're literally wasting your time. So I tell everybody run everything together, run it at the start. And in uh, and, and all my experience, when people don't use tests, D-ball does not cause gyno. I never see it. It's only in people using items like tests. How long should it wait? before I do a PCD after DECA cycle. I want to come off here and stay natural for some time. <clears throat> um, I'm assuming that you're already on, you know, I have my cycle, uh, my article about how to prevent shutdown while you're on cycle using Clomid during the cycle. Um, how long do you wait to after uh, DECA cycle? 
You can start it sooner, but then you get some of the clomid sides. I like to tell people to wait about four-ish to, to, to five weeks and uh, start it then. Uh, I lost 40 kg and went down from 105 kg to 65 kg. My libido is dysfunctional. What do you suggest? Um, don't know en enough about you. I'm assuming you're natural. Uh, nine times out of ten, people are dieting. The low calories and specifically the low fat will destroy your libido. Um, up your fats. Um, that, you know, again, I don't know enough about your see your diet to give you a proper suggestion, but my guess is going to be it's your fats. What is the most hair safe compound? <clears throat> Go to my YouTube channel here and see the only steroid safe for hair loss. And of my immense experience with thousands and thousands of over a decade of hair loss sufferers, DECA and Debolt is the only two safe compounds. DECA at no matter what dose, 5,000 milligrams a week. In the most hair prone individuals on off 100 milligrams of test gaining hair loss, never seen DECA cause uh, hair loss. Next to that is uh, Debolt. Uh, you mentioned using tomato juice as a pump. Can you explain that to an idiot like myself? And are there any other unorthodox tips that you also have? Tons of unorthodox tips. Um, not sure if you mean in general related to pumps. Uh, tomato juice is kind of like an all-in-one item that you don't have to take a whole bunch of other items and many items that other items don't have. It's got nitrates, which is very important for your pump. It has a histamine, insanely important. Most people don't know this. Histamine is amazing for blood flow and getting, and getting your pumps going. It's a histamine-rich food. It's very rich in potassium. You need potassium at a specific amount for every single gram in water of water and carbs that you intake to store as glycogen. Um, so, and it's very rich in potassium. It has high amounts of sodium when you get it in the can. So it has all the main electrolytes you need it for an amazing pump and a whole bunch of different other chemicals that enhance your pump greatly. It is the best item bar none I've had. Like I said, first place worldwide class power lifters. You see my testimonials, you know, I have them do this, their strength, they, they, you know, they take it and they stop taking it. Their strength goes to shit. This is bar none the best thing ever. As for unorthodox tips, um, I don't even know where to start, man. I'll give it, uh, do a couple of random ones. Um, uh, so carnitine is one of my biggest things where I've had uh, elite lifters uh, add carnitine and they, their TRT doses makes them feel like they're on a cycle. Something I've been suggesting for a long time uh, because as we know, steroids, their effects with uh, strength and size is due to androgen receptor upregulation. And uh, you know, come six weeks, it goes back down to baseline and you're just getting an anti-catabolic effect from steroids. So um, carnitine is bar none, a mind blowing thing to add to a cycle. Oral form is fine. Um, what else? Um, uh, seeds, seeds, seeds are godsend, uh, high magnesium content and uh, high polyunsaturated saturated fat content. It'll help keep you lean. It'll help them build a lot more muscle, a lot more muscle. People avoid fats too much. And when I overdose on the seeds, they, you know, they see such an amazing difference. I've used seeds to keep people's blood pressure in control because of the good magnesium content. I've had people literally stage two hypertension on, on meds. So many people this way and literally within a week with proper dietary interventions, it'd be completely off meds. Their BP is fine. Never had anybody that had BP that stayed high that when, you know, I um, did my dietary interventions like seeds and that they didn't, that they weren't fixed afterwards. Um, sorry guys, just checking something. <clears throat> um, I'll try and think of a couple more. If I'm trying to, if I go through my Facebook group, I'll probably see a million random things that are like freaking random as hell that but people um, rave about or love. Um, where am I? Uh, if you if you want to prevent gyno with deep, well, you can take 50 milligrams like three weeks, but then it is good to get lower to maybe. Also very first of all, um, again, in my experience, I've never seen Debo cause gyno on anybody that wasn't running tests. I just, you know, I've never really seen it happen. I think that is only for people running tests. This is why all the old pros use 7,000 milligrams a day. They use th thousands, hundreds of milligrams, you know, depending on they use it for years and months on end. And again, like me and my clients, um, 100 milligrams test would give us gyno, but we run 300 milligrams Debo and there's absolutely no risk of gyno for us. So. Uh, I just picked up some tomato juice because of the last video. Hey coach, when taking d -ball and Clomid, how should they be timed um, throughout the day? <clears throat> so I'm assuming you're doing uh, my, my, my method, um, proving with the studies to um, prevent shutdown while you're on cycle. Uh, d -ball, I, I like it to be spaced out at least three times a day. Uh, that is my preferred method. Uh, Clomid can just be taken once a day because it's a six day half-life. You could even take it every other day. Um, 
Yeah, that's an answer. So you take take Clomid one hour, truly. Uh, Debo, like three times throughout the day, and time one of the doses about one to two hours before your workout of the Debo. What cycle with 250 milligrams test for cutting wood do you recommend for somebody worried about hair loss? <coughs> um, well, one, I wouldn't run tests at all. Tests, even low doses, I see cause almost everybody hair loss. I'll drop the test and run a DECA or Debo base. The only two compounds, as I said, go to my YouTube video. The only steroid safe for hair loss is DECA and Debo. I would only run DECA and Debo. I'm prone to hair loss, just like majority of my clients, and nothing is safe. Nothing is besides DECA and Debo, really. So that's what I would do. Um, should it always be taken with a test base? No, that is complete bro science. Go to tn.com under my art, uh, articles on, on the left side, you'll see my DECA base, no testosterone cycle, something I've been using for decades. I'm uh, sorry, a decade. Something that the old pros and bodybuilders and doctors use for decades, HIV patients and so on, they, they used uh, DECA over test because it had better immune function. They had less sides. They overall just felt better. So um, yeah, d my clients for 10 years and bodybuilders for, for decades and doctors have used DECA as a base. You do not need test. Uh, you can even use D-Ball as a base. Um, what are key nutrients to get the right support PCT uh, slash Clomid? Is taurine really important with Clomid? Uh, taurine, taurine has a lot of health benefits, you know, helps protect the, the liver, the testicles, has so many health benefits because two thirds of our taurine is destroyed by cooking via the diet. Um, it has so many freaking benefits, man. I would say run it. There's no reason not to. Um, oh, that's from Raymond Johnson, um, right? What are the key, nu key nutrients, like all of them, go to chronometer, ensure you're getting every single nutrient, uh, RDA and above. Uh, potassium is super important. Um, one of the main things that is not nutrient that is very important is fats, 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 and more fats. Cannot tell you how important when I raise guys' fats, they finally see themselves in covers. Fats is so important. Uh, any nutritional changes needed when taking TRT compared to being natural? Absolutely. Um, one, TRT, you're shutting down very, so many um, dozens of different uh, uh, hormones in your body, but you're also putting yourself at risk for heart disease and LVH, uh, the uh, left ventricle uh, hypertrophy. Um, so when you take steroids, they're increasing calcium uptake and intracellular calcium, which is what puts you at increased risk for cell death, uh, uh, cell death, like brain, brain cell death even. Um, the way we get around this is a uh, K2, uh, magnesium, and uh, vitamin A. We use magnesium to keep cal calcium soluble and help get it into the bones. K2, the same thing. Calcium actually breaks down the calcium in, in your artery in your arteries as well. If you have you know um, excess calcium in the blood and helps get it into the bones, vitamin A does a similar thing. So when you're but you're throwing your body off when you're taking TRT because you're um, increasing your uh, calcium uptake in uh, in you know intestinal and via uh, extracellular, so you are you're giving calcium this hand up and the other nutrients no, and it throws everything out of balance, and that's why we uh, get like LVH and heart disease. But you can fully prevent it and you actually can reverse uh, not just heart disease, but LVH as well with items like K2 magnesium. And that is proven in studies. So those are the, the main important nutrients they take. And, and also vitamin E, that is for uh, the increased clotting risk um, with um, all those factors as well. Um, are there any natural ways to do a PCD if you cannot get clomid? Absolutely. I've, I've had guys recover just naturally. Absolutely. Uh, well, one, if you can't get clomid, AI is a great way to recover. AI is do not, if you're natural and you're making estrogen via your testicles, even if it's very little, AI cannot touch it. This is why in men using 22 milligrams of armidadex cannot crush your estrogen. Don't be afraid of AIs. ARs are really great and helpful. Uh, lots of fats. So vitamin E, taurine, calcium deglucrate, and lots and lots of fats. Um, ashwagandha is another big A too, but lots and lots of fats. Eat those fats and use those testosterone boot boosting items. Um, zinc bond, vitamin D, fatty foods, working on itself. Uh, I, I careful of the vitamin D just because it can, uh, when it creates a copper deficiency, it's one of the, the rare tricky minerals. I only like to suggest it for sure. We know that somebody is low in zinc, um, because a lot of people are actually low in copper today. And a lot of bodybuilders take zinc for long periods of times. What type of L-carnitine works for AR upgrading that I've been using ring the L-carnitine? Um, there's multiple different studies on different forms. A favorite form that I like is the tart tartrate form. Um, where am I going? Uh, yes, my body fat is about eight to nine percent. My diet is low fat. Yes. What foods do you suggest more? Where I'm shredded every, but I still have a bit of fat in there. My well-defined uh, six-pack. 
For, so, so this is proven as a big uh, considered myth for a long time because of incorrect done studies like where they made people work out one leg and they didn't work out the other leg and they uh, didn't see fat loss but they weren't in a but they were not eating in a deficient to actually see fat loss when they repeated the studies they proved that body fat loss spot reduction of body fat was real when you're actually eating to lose body fat so to get rid of that excess fat down there do immense amounts of core work like like a circuit style and the more increased blood flow you will lose more fat and fast it um exercises proven to burn um uh spot reduction of body fat even better so i tell people to wake up and do a lot of core work um what foods um fats in general will raise your hormones but cholesterol rich foods are are very important too fats in general get a wide variety so eggs um uh fish uh, but you can get it from any but i like fish because they're um uh, how much you can eat to keep you full for like gram, you know, like 300 grams of salmon is like 50 grams of protein compared to like 200 grams of chicken breast. Um, so yeah. Is that kind of dermal boiling uh, hard to recover from even with the BCD? Well, it, it'll take longer to recover from, but, um, there's studies comparing Deccan to Nandrol and Nandrol actually had better, um, sperm count in the LH by just a marginal amount. Most guys, when they do a deco only cycle, um, in my following, they'll notice that their balls never shrink and stuff like that. And when they come off, they never have that dreaded low from when they use testosterone. And, and, okay, majority of my guys find it's easier to recover from deco than testosterone. It's just your PCT will have to be a bit later, but they find it easier to recover. I'm on a deco cycle thinking to add Debo. What Debo? What? what would Debo add to my deca cycle benefit side effects wise you shouldn't get any sides except for uh the main ones that you would get would be uh appetite loss and possibly uh some sleeping issues those are the two main sides I, that i would look out for what would it add it would add uh immense amount more fat loss uh, a lot more water weight so a little bit more size in, in the long run just a little bit not a lot and a lot more strength though uh cx in the chat thanks poseidon um Planning 600 milligram cycle and bought some Debo to stack, but I have no AI. Is there any chance of getting androgenic sides, e.g. gyno, hair loss, etc.? So I went over this a few times. Go to my YouTube channel to see my only hair safe steroid cycle video. Deca and Debo, I, I go over and I did oral only cycle. Out of my experience for like 10 years, guys running Debo and Deca only without having tests, guys who add Debo to test cycles usually see gyno and other effects. Deca and or Debo. Or sorry, I think this one's just for default. I don't know. Anyways, no, I never see gyno. I never freaking see hair loss in it. Like literally almost never. And this is why the 70 guys had no gyno. They had great hair because they ran these cycles and they didn't run tests. What are your thoughts about the bro science and not having uh, fats post-workout meal? Uh, I'm not sure which bro science in particular you are, are, you are referencing. Uh, I, th I, th I, th I think you're just uh, saying in general, uh, people go, oh no, avoid f fats and just get uh, protein and carbs because, I don't know, because you're jamming back the carbs and you're having a big insulin spike or something like that. I think that's the one you're referencing. Um, absolutely r ridiculous. Um, as I pointed out, and you go to read my articles, tn.com, you'll see my uh, uh, skinny fat article. I point out how people, when they're overfed polyunsaturated fats, example that I repeated 10 times, they overfed them 700 calories a day of polyunsaturated versus saturated fats, and the polyunsaturated went entirely to muscle growth, and the saturated fats almost entirely to fat gain. This is why I don't do macro plans and I don't do calorie plans. Uh, I do specific food choices. Fats are needed for muscle growth. Fats are important. It's the food choices you make that matter versus um, other things. Uh, coach, you have a lot of patients keep getting the same questions over and over again. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Deca for decades. Uh, so would you recommend a Diva only cycle? Absolutely. Go to my YouTube and check my oral only cycle and you will see I do a video about myself and followers and old pros and stuff like that who have used Debo only as a cycle countless old pros and I've even shown messages from old pros that I was straight up asked them what their cycle was and so many of them did Debo, Debo only cycles absolutely yeah it's a great cycle it's a side free cycle basically um it, it's it's amazing if K2 MK7 gives a racing heart, is K1 available substitute? If so, what dose? Uh, K K1 does have have the all the same benefits essentially as K2. It just it just is a bit weaker. Um, K2 is possibly giving you the racing heart because you're low in vitamin E. So um, vitamin E is very important for things like AFib. So you know when your heart fluttering and it's beating irregular. Vitamin E is one of the most important nutrients that, and K2 actually depletes vitamin E. Whew. 
Yes, he's talked about the Debo only being a hair safe and efficient cycle so many times. He has videos about it too. Is fat from eggs okay? I go through 8 to 12 whole eggs a day. I cannot add in some seeds if that isn't enough fat. Yes and no. There's no particular science on it. This is the thing. When I say saturated fats, I add entirely fat gain. Fats are made up of a whole bunch of different fatty acids. It's just like, you know how you have protein? There are different mixtures of tyrosine and uh, uh, glycine and uh, cysteine, blah, 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 blah. Fats have different fatty acid composition, fatty acid compositions. Certain fatty acid compositions will help lead to, to fat gain. There's no study specifically on eggs and their fatty acid composition. Um, I I consider eggs as, you know, at a because we can only go by anecdotal experience as like a medium um, going towards fat and uh, muscle gain. Um, I think you're the person about the low, t the, 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 the beetle dysfunction. I will, I would up eggs a little bit more and then also uh, add some seeds. Ever tried injectable super gel? It should remove the toxicity on your liver. Thoughts? Uh, yes and no. So obviously we don't have studies on um, you know each different oral that, uh, with you know it being injectable versus um, um, oral on its to toxicity of the liver. My personal anecdotal experience with using orals injectable versus um, injectable versus oral in, in my immense amounts of clients is in the um what, what's the word i'm not going by not blood work but when the like the results you see um like when you i can't think of the goddamn word my experience um with people and myself is that when you do take injectable there's no difference in the sides that you see on the outside the example let's say appetite loss and so on there's no difference in fatigue no difference in appetite loss and, and so on like that um but in theory it, it should be better uh, because it's one less bypass, but it's still um, having that effect of crisis uh, of the liver regardless. Why are you re remetting, recommending seeds? They are incredibly hard to digest uh, and say omega-3 conversion from chia seeds is non-existent. Uh, existent. Vegans claim you can get omega-3s from chia seeds, which is wrong. <clears throat> okay, so... Some seeds don't even have very high omega-3 content. If you see the seeds I'm recommending, I actually aren't even high omega-3 seeds. Uh, mainly the seeds I'm, uh, I generally recommend are, um, are uh, hemp seeds and um, sunflower seeds. Chia seeds specifically, I was recommending for the calcium. This is why I talk about a, a variety diet. You're talking about omega-3 and thinking I'm suggesting somebody to get all their omega-3 from seeds when that's not what I said and that's nothing that I said at all. If you see any of my posts, I always suggest a very variety diet to ensure you're getting all your nutrients across a variety of foods. Um, example, you're talking about omega-3 and you know DHA and EPA. If you see me mention about 20 times, I suggest fish, 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 fish. I've said it like a hundred times. More than anybody on any of my diets is getting way more than enough omega-3 and actually getting too much omega-3. This It's a huge fad today about having uh, lowering your omega-6 and e getting like equal 3 uh, three to 6. It is retarded. Sorry, I was trying to use that word. It is completely ridiculous to do such a thing when there's so many studies proving that uh, your most optimal cognitive function and so on is actually a 4 to 1 ratio. There is now new studies on it. People avoiding omega-6 with the increased uh, inflammation and heart, uh, heart disease and stuff like that it is stupid stupid fad so one i'm not telling people to eat chia seeds for omega-3 i'm telling them to eat chia seeds to get a uh, easy source of calcium and uh, a few other vitamins and minerals nothing to do with omega-3 um so yeah that it's com completely ir irrelevant uh what you're saying <clears throat> Uh, how risky is self-administrated TRT if blood markers are watch closely and diet sleep training? Uh, risky in the sense like you're going to die, have a heart attack, heart attack or, or something like that. Um, you know, that risk is slightly there of increasing heart disease and stuff like that. When if you are already at risk in a bad diet, but if you're doing things like getting adequate K2, vitamin E, magnesium, vitamin A and so on. To me, the risk of any actual like huge dangers is like non-existent. Um, that's my opinion. However, you are shutting down various multiple of different hormones and you're at risk of even things like, you know, uh, low adrenal hormones and so on. You know, those risks are there with any steroids, period. That's why I like people to come off and take Clomid or, or you know, run other things on cycle. Can a Devo only cycle be used to officially cut? Yeah, absolutely. For a hair safe steroid cycle, Devo is one of my favorite steroids uh, for people to cut with. Uh, could... RU58841 offset hair loss, for example, um, oxandrolone. 
Uh, hold on, guys. Somebody's at the door. Sorry. Never mind, it wasn't the door. Um, I thought it was the door. I've been waiting all day for a package and uh, it's supposed to be coming today and uh, haven't been able to leave. Um, so I was hoping that was it, but uh, apparently not. Yeah, so will are you um, offset hair loss from um, Anovar? Uh, nobody can answer this, answer this for sure. There's no studies on it. Um, low dose of Anovar is using proper um, adequate amounts of topicals and things like that. In my experience, um, if you if you are severely hair prone and attack it very aggressively, um, topically certain things, you can offset most of it in my experience. Again, there's no studies from this. We can only go by uh, anecdotal experience um, in this um, area. Sorry, I'm out of breath. Um, running up the stairs. Ooh, uh, where were we? How oh no, uh, how frequently do you do the live Q&As? Um, well, I started doing them a, a few times a week, if you notice back there, but then I got sick uh, for a little bit there. So um, my plan is honestly to do it near daily. Uh, that's the plan that I want to work up to. Um, so yeah, that is the plan. Um, done it two days in a row now. I, I really need, I really want to keep this up. Um, so yeah, looking more alive already coach. Proud of you. Uh, thanks. Uh, very, very poor, uh, sleep last night. Um, cause I was up on live till 3 AM and I didn't want to sleep in too much and throw, throw off my sleep schedule. So, um, very little sleep today. Um, will beard growth occur when running tests only with finasteride? Um, so yes and no will it grow yes will it be slower than your natural state that depends on a variance of factors because you know there is men with um things like androgen androgen uh, uh or 5 ar deficiency deficiency stuff like this so make very little dht and they will mega dose them with testosterone some they'll some they'll get straight dht and the mega doses of testosterone so testosterone can hit the same receptors as DHT. It's just it's much weaker at it. So you need a very high mega dose of testosterone to offset for the lack of DHT. So you need you need like a thousand milligrams of testosterone to equal like a hundred milligrams of DHT as an example. Uh, hair looking pretty today. I appreciate the kind words. Uh, yours is looking very pretty today too. Were you terrified when you first pinned? My gear arrives next week or so, first cycle, and I'm getting all kind of anxiety when I think about it. So my first pin was when I was like 16, I think. Um, and I actually had my mom do my first pin. Um, I hate getting into these topics a little bit because people always ask me more questions. <laughs> it's, it's always really interesting people. Um, so my mom was like a heavy drug user. Uh, I wasn't living with my mom at the time. Uh, I left home at like around 15. But my mom was a heavy drug user and I decided, you know, oh, I'm going to do, I'm ready to do, I'm ready to do my cycle. And I, and I was, I was scared shitless to do my first pin. And I was like, well, frig, my mom knows how to do uh, use needles. So let's ask my mom. Now I went over and told my mom and she did it with an uh, insulin pin in my shoulder. Um, so absolutely, I, w I, was I was scared shitless. So there's just, you know, you're, you're going to be, I'm scared of needles in general. I don't like blood and things going into my body. Uh, that freaks me out. So uh, yeah, I was very, uh, very scared. Um, yeah, I had to do my first few shots. And then I remember, you know, actually she did a few. I remember going home and I decided to 
or maybe she did about half my cycle shots. I can't remember. And then I remember going home and then starting to do them on my own. It was just like, you know, you just sit there staring at your leg or whatever you're going to do. You're just staring at like, oh my God, like you're just like you eventually just do it. Um, I suggest doing with with an insulin needle, a half inch insulin needle is usually the biggest you can get for, for most uh, easily. Um, and, and indenting the muscle so you like push in so when you indent you're getting into the muscle better um, it's much less scary it's much thinner it's much less painful because you know when you see like a 23 and even a 25 it's big and it I'm not even gonna lie it, it's it's kind of painful uh, instant needles are, are a breeze um, so yeah uh, They say DECA makes you emotionally cold. Would Debo give you more motivation and drive than DECA? I don't, you know, a lot of people say this motivation and drive. And um, I think what they're more so talking about is um, an aggressiveness, which DECA isn't, a, it doesn't make you aggressive. Like in the gym, like you're not like insanely aggressive. And estrogen is usually what, estrogen is also a big factor in enhancing uh, aggression. So uh, Debo can, and many people will know that from it. Um, uh, but Debo does, this is one of the things I find majority of my followers are, a few don't like it, but a largely majority of them love it because Tess always made them emotional ups and down. Made, made you kind of like cry baby sometimes. You were overly emotional about things, not like you'd actually cry, but you'd get, you know, aggressive and ragey and this and that and, and emotional in a sad way. Uh, Deca example for me and most of my followers, why they love it so much is it makes you feel like picture, um, some old movie like like a 60s style um a 60s style movie where you see this uh this man that's like the man of the household he, you know he's very stoic and very cold in a sense and that's my best way to describe it and i absolutely love that feeling and majority of my followers love that feeling because it's just like nothing bothers you you know you don't get the emotional ups and downs the depression this and that from estrogen you just you feel like uh that epitome of like uh of, of a male figure you're just so like you know you're I, you nothing bothers you it, you're very emotionally and mentally stable in the best way possible it's a very nice feeling uh in my in most of my followers opinions thanks will you be live tomorrow at the same time uh, i plan to try and be live every day like you said as for the time frame no idea right yet i would like to go live multiple times a day um i'm thinking uh, i'm going to try and stick around my my, my live uh, around like three to um five ish uh, somewhere in between there to, to start um that's what that's what i'm thinking um hi how would you support your liver during an on do you do you only oral cycle would you uh how long would you run it to prevent liver damage uh run the cycle um i think if that's what you're asking don't worry about liver toxicity on you know, D Old pros ran it for years and months. Half my following runs 200 milligrams a day for months on end. Old pros ran it for years on end. Your liver isn't going to fail. It's a huge bro science thing about being uh, four weeks, your liver is going to fail, all that bulk up. Liver protective items is still important and great just for overall health, even though your liver isn't going to fail. Taurine, Oxbow, and Tutka, um, all those are, are very great items with, they kind of hit it in different aspects like Torin preventing fibrosis and stuff like that while also aiding bioflow. But those are the three uh, main big main big items. There's other things, but those are my three favorite like NAC and vitamin E and so on. Good morning, my sexy beast. Can we get away with less than 400 milligrams of NPP a week for muscle growth or would it be not effective? Uh, well, I'm not sure if you've seen my last uh, cycle that I started there, um, that was 400 milligrams. Uh, my biggest cycle, best cycle ever was 400 milligrams. Absolutely, it is mind blowing. Most people do better on lower doses because they feel less fatigue and their appetite keeps up and they, they can just eat and live life better so they can grow better. Absolutely, the higher dose you go, the more fat loss you see too, so it kind of impairs some people. You hear a lot of pros say that they were their biggest on their lower doses because they just, you know, they went dealt with things better. Have you ever had any clients deal with anxiety from anabolics? If so, how did you go about fixing it? All depends on the anabolics and the issues and so on. Sometimes people start a new diet because they're on a cycle. Like example, omega-3, we we're talking about omega-3 is notorious for giving some people anxiety because it offsets uh, the GLA and the omega-6 in the diet. Uh, so did their diet change or it could be due to um, the anabolic For example a lot of the DHCs are notorious for giving anxiety high estrogen can give anxiety so it all depends on the drugs and stuff like that um, Deepa only if Deepa only cycle if I do six if I do a six week cycle how long should I take off before next before next cycle uh, Debo only cycle three to four weeks is your off period. 
No, it does. Uh, thanks. Well, uh, knock, knock. Knock, knock. Hello, that's the police. Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> uh, they say that can make you. No. T bolt instead of D bolt during a deck that only cycle. Good idea or it doesn't really work? Uh, it, it's it's a top favorite cycle that I suggest for people. Um, I've had people prep on it. it it's amazing. You look amazingly um, full and hard. It, it, amazing cycle. D bolt only cycle use as much A as you want, but TRT is bad. Damn. Um, I mean, what D bolt only cycle use as much AI as you want. But TRT is bad, damn. Uh, I'm not sure what that's in reference to. Um, I know if, if you're saying I said that or did somebody else say that, I don't know. I don't suggest AI with a D ball, uh, D ball cycle because you, uh, I've never seen estrogen from it. Uh, sorry, I've never seen people get gyno from it. Uh, T TRT is bad. Well, first of all, um, again, I'm not sure if this is directed at the comment I made. All steroids are bad, all steroids are shutting down uh, dozens of different hormones in your body. and yeah, all steroids are a bad period. Um, TRT in comparison to D-Ball, uh, TRT is going to give you worse prolactin, worse estrogen. This is why most people get gyno on a leg side from TRT, but they don't get it from uh, D-Ball. Uh, what times like, uh, I'll start and LGD have the same six week limit at gaining muscle like anabolics. Uh, no studies on this. Um, the, the, I, I don't study SARMs. I think most of them are garbage. The, the, you get worse sides half the time from the SARMs and way less benefit. Uh, but the ones that are going to have an anabolic effect at the androgenic receptor, those ones specifically, they should. Um, oops. Let's go down one shot. Where am I? When you make a video why TRT is bad and go in depth, uh, yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I kind of did here, but I guess a, a video solo. Yeah, uh, well, it's not just TRT, all steroids in general. You being on a form of HRT is uh, bad. There's much better ways, right? What are your thoughts on gel versus injection for TRT? Thanks a lot. Uh, well, if you read the other comments, I don't like TRT. I would rather somebody do Clomid in a proper PCT with proper dietary interventions first to do everything possible to avoid being on TRT. Um... But yeah, um, what was I saying? I don't remember saying. So I keep squinting, guys, because my laptop's like down here and far away from me when I'm trying to um, read things. Uh, <clears throat> just asking, are you going to end up doing a video on micronutrient dense meal examples? I found your answer very interesting. Um, yeah, I, I'll do a video on that. I, I did, um, if you've seen. A bit ago, I don't know where it was in the goddamn video now, um, but I, I did um, a little example of 500 calories with salmon and spinach and some chia seeds of it hitting a majority of your nutrients. Um, so I did a little example there, but I do end up, uh, we'll do end up video where I break down a lot more foods and, uh, you know, I do some for cutting because people think about this, but you know, the, yeah, I, yeah, I, I do a few different examples like that in a, in a proper video. Have you ever had clients run a D ball only cycle without having to do a PCT? I've, absolutely. A lot of guys don't run a uh, PCT. Uh, <laughs> and I've had people not want to do it and just not do it. And, and yeah, and some recover and some, some don't uh, without the PCT. Although it's not like I followed them up usually after the people who didn't want to either. Some of them, you know what I mean? Um, just some people, you know, they don't. Um, what do you suggest after eight months of diet without a single cheat meal or fooling around? I am the libido guy for La Fala. What do you suggest me to do for the upcoming months? Uh, calorie intake uh, is 1800 at 65 kg. A few things. Um, one, um, refeeds, lots of refeeds, always refeeds. Um, there was actually a good study where I think it was 10 days. Yeah, 10 days. They had people, 12 days total. And uh, they had one group do a two day refeed. Um, uh, they, yeah, they had one group do a two, do, two day refeed, uh, which is two days in a row. So overall they ate more calories in a 12 day period and actually lost more weight. So uh, as we know, from what we can tell from studies is that the metabolism just about once every, uh, uh, sorry, every 48 hours. This is why some people swear by carb cycling. So you've been going steady and possibly doing yourself a disservice when you could have saw better results and not killed yourself as much. I would suggest no matter what you do, have a refeed at least once a week for two days in a row or do a car or do a calorie cycling where it's, uh, you know, two days low, two days high, two days low, two days high and repeat. Um, I would also say, uh, what was I going to say? Um, 
crap, I lost my train of thought. Um, so I would suggest you do this anyways. Um, it's going to benefit you in immense amount of ways. But when you do only do it two days in a row, there was another great study where they showed uh, refeeding for one day uh, actually caused um, fat gain. Re refeeding for two days in a row caused um, uh, fat loss. And this kind of compiles with the theory. I've kind of put this together. I don't feel like anybody else has really mentioned it that about the metabolism adjusting every 48 hours with a whole, like I have a plethora of different studies that kind of point towards this with that study as an example, where that you saw more fat loss when you refeed it for two days in a row. And that kind of lines up with the other um, studies that are showing, okay, it seems like 40, if you eat higher for 48 hours, it's going to boost your metabolism versus just eating high for one day, it's going to cause uh, a surplus and you don't get the metabolism boost to see the higher drop in weight loss when you go back down in calories. Um, that was my suggestion there. Um, um, how much d per day is considered medium dosage and for how long it should be run? Uh, my considerations for d dosage is um, 30 milligrams is the low range, 50 milligrams is um, the, the moderate range, and 75 to 100 milligrams is, is a high, higher dosage range. Um, sorry guys, so let me check something quickly. Crap, what am I doing? Uh, what did I do? Um, would you rather do a rad 140 cycle or a depot only for being absolutely not rad 140 absolutely depot you're going to get immense better gains you're going to get way less sides if you're scared about shutdown go to my youtube channel or tan.com website and read or watch my video on uh, how to prevent shutdown on the cycle and rud clomid throughout your cycle and, it will prove, and it's been proven to fully prevent shutdown of lh fsh testosterone your whole system absolutely will not run rad absolutely not <coughs> Watch the video about if it fits your macros and why it is bad. I really do not understand the cooked oil versus not cooked oil. Isn't it the same amount of uh, calories either way? Uh, no. So we know this with um, multiple different foods, actually, that when you when you cook it, it has um, higher bioavailable energy, if you, if you want to say that. You are going to extract more nutrients in a sense out of the food and this is what multiple studies have shown specifically with fat with the 30 um with a 30 percent difference in actually the energy that you will be um you'll be getting from the food so you know example you take um a, a raw weight okay 30 grams or 30 grams of nuts uh three three nuts each hand 10 grams each okay 30 grams of nuts raw, raw weight here they are in both these hands i cook the ones you're going to, you know, when you cook when you cook something that has a little bit of water content, you know, dehydrate and whatnot. So we're not talking cooked weight here, completely raw. When you cook it, that same amount of nuts, so three nuts is the same weight, everything about it, when they were cooked, the body was able to utilize 30% more energy from those fats. Um, so that was that in my If It Fits Your Macro video in here, if, if others haven't saw it, that is one of the issues I go over when people just say, when they give you a macro plan here go eat this eat this many calories eat this many macros it's like okay well what if i ate uh raw food and then on you know my cut or my bulk i switch to uh cooked food that completely just threw off my calories fully that's why i hate people that do macro plans and calorie plans it makes no sense to me and i only you need to give food plans um yeah d -ball is best for your hair t -ball. go to my youtube channel watch my only safe steroids for hair loss i go over basically most every steroid that people use today, T-ball is not safe. All my experience of a decade of thousands of followers, T-ball is not hair safe. D-ball is very hair safe. Uh, so no thoughts on, um, I didn't even pronounce that one, the it, yes, it's just or whatever. Um, it's something I've, I've researched uh, vaguely. Um, something that I think in real world uh, experience actually has any bit of a of an effect no not in comparison to steroids and stuff like that no like not at all um 45 people watching almost still crazy um so you guys just checking one thing on my computer uh, what am i doing so i gotta read the comments in one second <clears throat> um, 
what am I doing? Okay, coming back. All right. Here from Derek's channel, very in, uh, informative video so far. I appreciate it. I uh, appreciate Derek giving me the shout out. We got um, a fair few new people um, <laughs> following messaging. Um, how do you treat gyno? Uh, depends on the route you want to go. We know in studies, uh, usually, you know, gyno is very traumatizing to most people. I don't like to mess around with it, uh, depending on the route somebody wants to take, you know, sometimes it's nice to just throw some Nova at it. As an example, uh, Ralox, I find is very hard to get real Ralox. It was proven to be a little bit better in studies, but Novadex, even in very old, um, uh, gyno tissue was proven to be, um, very effective. Um, I think every single participant saw a sh uh, reduction in gyno. Um, sorry, cat. Um, so yeah, serms are very strong with, um, it was strong and proven to uh, reverse your gyno, and this wasn't from steroids, these are old, you know, just um, gyno from puberty and stuff like that. But however, I do have a natural protocol that I've had people and have had success with it. Go to my uh, YouTube channel, see my natural AI, natural estrogen control video. Uh, there I go in detail why somebody might be getting estrogen size and somebody might not be. And usually I pin it down to lack of vitamin A in the diet, natural anti-estrogen, lack of vitamin E in the diet. And then you can also use some uh, natural safe items like calcium deglucurate, um, which is a very good an natural anti-estrogen. Um, so yeah, uh, definitely uh, check out that video. Uh, would Clomid during vivo cycle crash my estrogen? <clears throat> no, Clomid does not crash your estrogen. Clomid actually raises your estrogen. Clomid blocks estrogen from binding to specific uh, tissue sites in your body, but it's actually raising your estrogen and uh, keeping all your natural hormone production up. But no, it will not crash your estrogen. If I've never taken Devo before, would you say start at 30 milligrams and work up from there or does it matter? So I'm for the camp and if you're going to shut yourself down and put your body up, so a lot of steroid side effects, uh, many can put it down more to due to in study in some studies, duration more so than dose. So I'm all about short cycles as 90% of the strength and size gains is seen in the first six weeks, okay? So I'm more for if you're going to shut yourself down and you're only on for a limited amount of time, get in and get whatever you can uh, safely as effectively as possible and get out. So I'm more for going for a bit higher dose. Um, I myself would do 50 to 100 milligrams, 50 being moderate, 75 to 100 being um, uh, more uh, higher range. You see a lot of old pros actually start at around 75 to 100 milligrams for their first cycles even. Um, DOL is widely used back then. I'm not telling you to do any steroids. I'm not telling you to do anything. I'm just saying what I would do, but yeah. Um, uh, I just, because I'm scared of steroids. Um, I'll tell you why you're scared of steroids and go to my YouTube channel, see my how to prevent shutdown or it's on my site tan.com how to prevent uh, shutdown as well. If you're scared of the shutdown aspect, uh, just run some Clomid uh, before and during the cycle and it'll fully prevent shutdown. You won't be shut down. Your body will never know you're on and you know you can run a cycle sa safely if, if that's what you're uh, scared of the shutdown wise. Can I use a U40 half inch insulin syringe for pets uh, for MPP? Uh, absolutely, yeah. Um, when you're doing IM this way, you just want to make sure you indent the muscle um, so it, it gets in properly. So, you know, some people will just, you know, stick that in, but then you push in a little bit more so it's indented. So you're uh, deeper into the um, muscle. I did DECA only and I loved it. Yeah, <laughs> me too, me too. Um, <clears throat> new voicemail. Uh, thoughts on RU5883? Um, <clears throat> it, it works. Uh, it's, I, I explained this before when somebody else had me. So every few years in the hair, in the hair loss, like, um, uh, what do you want to call it? Circle. There a new item come out, like a new topical anti androgen this or that. A bunch of people use it, they don't really see results, and then they quit using it, and then a new one comes out, and they go to the next one. Like, sp spironolactone was the last one, and that phased out. You know, they all work, they're all proven to work. It's just most people aren't doing the other things to help uh, regrowth and stop hair loss as well, and they're just trying to uh, target it locally and topically. It works, uh, absolutely. 
uh, you just want to make sure you have the other aspects in. Is it, is it a miracle? Absolutely not. And that's what, you know, most people will say and it was all they've seen. What compounds would you recommend for fat loss besides and bogs? Uh, T3, absolutely think it's a great compound. In studies, when protein is adequate, it actually, it enhances androgen receptors, so you're gonna see more muscle growth from it. That's why you hear most people say they feel it enhances steroids effects. More muscle growth um, and uh, m m more fat loss. Um, you just have to use it at the right dose with um, adequate protein because it increases your protein turnover, right? So if your protein's too low, that's when you see muscle loss, but you can actually see muscle growth when you have uh, adequate protein with it. Uh, what do you think is the minimum age you take steroids for least damage? Nobody can answer this. Nobody absolutely knows. Um, you know, they give babies testosterone uh, for like uh, micro, micro penis and stuff like that. But you have so many kids, different anabolics for, for different issue, issues, or they used to more so. Um, and there's no studies that really show any permanent damage or stuff like that. Like a, a lot of pro bodybuilders, a lot of people online knew they took it at like 16. I took it at 16. Um, nobody can answer this. Nobody knows. Um, so I, I would say probably, this is my opinion, and I'm not saying to do this or anybody should do this. I would say the minimum age, I would say, is one, because it's important to me, vanity, is make sure you believe that you're happy with your height and your growth points aren't going to fuse. Um, or, you know, they still haven't. And, you know, if that's fine, I would, if it was me myself, I would have, you know, I would still have took them at 16. Um, that That's me. That's not a uh, scientific or medical opinion because we don't have any. That is just my opinion on what I would do. Uh, how much MPP do you recommend a week with 100 milligrams d a day? Completely individual. Do what you're comfortable with and after knowing your body. So me, I will only do usually 400 milligrams a week because... I will suffer uh, appetite loss from too, too high androgens. Um, more is better, proven, it's not linear. It really starts to cut off. Usually around 1200 milligrams is, you know, where really people are pushing total week of AAs where they're not seeing much more benefit, um, but you still do see more benefit. Um, completely individual. Four to 600 is a lower medium range. Uh, 900 is like the higher range and 1200 to two gram is, you know, a very high range. Um, anywhere there, it all depends on you. Um, but yeah, and it all depends on what how you're going to live and be able to eat and stuff like that with the cycle to get the most benefit. If you can't eat on higher dosage, you're not going to see good gains. Um, can you talk more about uh, methylotren or uh, and nandrolol combo? Um, great, great cycle. Um, the only real side effect I have myself and seen people have with M-Trend is really just uh, the typical oral uh, appetite slowing effect. Don't see hair loss from it. Don't see really um, any side effect from it. It's really great strength. It's really great fullness. It's good fullness with a good um, tightness, but not super hard like most, uh, like the DHTs most of them can cause. So it's a full, f good fullness with a moderate tightness and uh, not, not many sides at all. How much NPP can be done in one shot? As much as your muscle can take, uh, truly. Um, you know, your glute can take three millis, you can take three millis, it, three millis, you know, 300 milligrams, six, you, you know, there's people that abuse that take insane dosage, you know, thousands of milligrams a day from injectable. You can take as much as you want, truly. But with the NPP, you really want to dose it every day um, for better blood levels. Who are getting tired, guys? Um, where are they? I've been 97 years. I decided to hop on gear and a coach made the cycle for me. Test P, Nandrolone, phenylpropanate. Uh, can't tell that word I'm thinking. That's primo. I think a uh, different language you spelled it. In total, how hair safe is it and how good is it? If you don't know your hair loss prone, you could be in for the worst um, hair loss of your life. Mass. Actually, no, I'm not sure. I can't, I can't see what, what word you, you uh, put there, but um, you are going to be insane high risk gyno. So testosterone jacks up your estrogen and prolactin, even TRT doses. You add something like nandrolone, which increases prolactin sensitivity and increases your uh, aromatized enzymes. So you're going to make more estrogen and more and be more prone to prolactin size with testosterone. And this is the case that most guys suffer is when they begin AAs. They use something like testosterone, they get horrible gyno, they're trying to control the AIs, they may need gyno surgery, that was me. Um, high risk hair loss. Like if I could go back and do things over again, I would have never touched this whole this whole test phase of high risk gyno, acne scars, and hair loss, and all of that crap. 
If I was ever to do anything and I didn't know what sides I was going to get or scared of sides, I would run DECA only or Debo only or DECA and Debo. There's like no risk of hair loss, no risk of gyno, and it's a great cycle. Um, you are putting yourself at some major risk for some sides that you don't know that you might get and some decent dosage of those drugs. Um, yeah, I, I would be I would be worried. I would I would not I would not do that. Like I mean to to me, gaining muscle it doesn't matter what compound you take, like at the end of the year, you're going to gain 30 pounds off steroids. You're going to gain 30 pounds off steroids. It doesn't matter if you got it from test, DECA or whatever. It's all about the same. I would not risk losing my hair for life and gyno and acne scars and this and that for over a cycle that doesn't bring me any extra benefit. Um, but yeah. Uh, no, is that everything? Are there steroids that can increase height? Yes and no. Um, so I, this is something I talked about, um, a long time ago and I see some people have been talking about it lately now. Um, I feel like I don't get my info out there, um, uh, adequate enough and other people end up, uh, seeing posts on it cause I've seen it talked about recently. Um, so example, there is that issue with certain men where they have aromatized efficiency and their growth plates never fuse. So if you were to take an AI or some natural um, estrogen control, you could prevent your gr growth plates from uh, never fusing and continuing to grow tall taller. So that would be your, um, you know, one of your best, uh, most effective um, uh, ways to go about it. What are the percent of the conversion in estrogen with Debo versus testosterone? Debo, I don't, the exact number cannot answer you. Um, I'm not even going to try and find the study. I don't know where it is. My laptop is a freaking mess. Um, the study was immense. I'm trying to remember. Debo created immensely less estrogen than testosterone, basically. But that's not something you really want to compare it to because it makes a stronger estrogen. Let's pretend it made um, half the estrogen of testosterone. But um, the estrogen was twice as strong, so then it kind of equals out. But, that, but that's not the case. It makes immensely less estrogen, but it makes a stronger estrogen. But that stronger estrogen is still immensely weaker than the total amount of estrogen that test makes. And that is why we don't see the same estrogenic sides. When you're on cycle, is it true that you have to eat a lot of calories a day to benefit for the nutrient partition and for extra growth? There is a point where you can eat too many calories and just get fat. Yes and no, as I said, the steroids aren't having any real effect there. Yes, they're going to help you grow muscle faster and stuff like that. Go to my website and you read my articles, um, under articles. I go over, I went over this uh, many times here. I'm, I'm not sure if you read that over here in my Facebook group, but your food choices determine if you're going to gain fat. There are studies on people overfeeding 900 grams, uh, 900 calories of protein a day, and all of that protein actually made them lose more fat and gain more muscle than the people eating less. There's studies on people overfeeding 700 calories of polyunsaturated fats versus saturated fats, and they gain entirely muscle, almost in the saturated fat gain entirely fat. It is your food choices that are going to where you gain fat. I've had people grossly overeat calories and not gain any fat because they were the right food choices. But yes, you want to maximize your the muscle building benefits there. You, I, I'm a firm believer everybody should eat a lot. Um, you're putting yourself... Uh, you know, a danger, not really danger, but you know, you're shutting down your body. You might as well make it worth it. Safe cycle for older guys. I'm 56 on TRT, no way. Uh, DECA, I would come off the TRT and run uh, a DECA only cycle. Um, and maybe a little bit of D-ball, uh, but it's not going to affect your prostate. You know, I would say you're going to feel immensely better with, uh, you know, a, a DECA only cycle. Go to TN.com, read my DECA cycle, no testosterone uh, base. Um, it's what all the old guys liked. It's what many old pros even used to suggest for older guys as well, because it had a lot less side effects than testosterone, which is proven to even in younger guys. But, you know, people suggest it because it didn't. Older guys are more prone to more estrogen and stuff like that. You know, less prostate or no prostate issues and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Thoughts on MK677 or GH in general with Debo and DECA? Um... MK677 in all studies caused fat gain. Um, it's not like GH, it doesn't really raise your GH after time, just your IGF-1. Um, immense bloat, immense fat gain. The only time they've ever suggested it is those people who truly need a, an, a, an amazing appetite boost, but in somebody can cause an insane insulin resistance. And when insulin resistance hits, that is when you can cause nerve damage. Um, you won't grow because the nutrients aren't getting into the muscle and you can actually shrink from it. Uh, GH has those same risks, but it's said that it has the benefit of fat loss. 
Um, so I only suggest those items when people want um, the increased appetite ben benefits and they're willing to use insulin with it, but it's not going to cause any muscle growth. If you go to tan.com, read my GH article, I will list, I list over studies over 40 years where they did 27 IU of uh, GH a day and athletes, and there's never been a single speck of muscle growth seen with GH use. The only studies show is that because GH causes immense water weight, okay? Uh, we see an increase in lean, uh, lean body mass weight, but when they do actual tissue biopsies, they show that there's actually no muscle, it's just water weight. So, um, yeah. Camo, Camo, how about microdosing test B every other day to control aromatization with DECA? Um, I don't know what you mean by control aromatization with DECA. You mean to make the test P less aromatizable? Um, well, one, uh, test P is only a 0 0.8 day half-life. Many people don't know. So you're going to have major peaks and valleys. And I think you're going to see more estrogenic sides uh, using test P uh, every other day versus every day. Your thoughts on intermittent fasting for weight loss, and do you think you can still build muscle while fasting a few hours in the beginning of the day? Absolutely you can, but is it the most efficient way? Absolutely not. You want to take advantage of every protein synthesis spike that you can get. So, you know, eating, but two, eating too close together, like two hours is actually uh, less beneficial than eating three hours apart. So somewhere around five meals a day is the maximum most anybody ever wants to eat. Uh, so can you, yes, is it going to be the most efficient? Absolutely not. Um, I don't like it in general, especially eating later in the day. It throws off your circadian rhythm. When you're eating too late in the day, you're telling your digestive hormones and stress hormones to actually jack up for the digestion and it can impair people's sleep, which is not good for health and bodybuilding. Um, I don't like it. I feel the small amounts of DHT benefits outweigh the hair loss risk. Um, you know, if somebody needs, it feels like they need a DHT benefit. I just suggest you using the, the lowest dose possible that you, um, act actually need example like i've suggested 20 to 30 milligrams sometimes upwards 50 milligrams of test and you know they can be okay with it um i always love deca only by adding a little bit of trt really helped me i don't have too much aromatization enzyme actually i suppose yeah and see someone like me i i had 30 milligrams of test and I, i'm a estrogenic mess can insulin be used for fat loss in what case fasted or not yes but i don't like it's too many negatives and too I don't like it. I don't like it at all. So people think when you use insulin, you become anti-catabolic. Absolutely no. Studies have shown when you don't have carbs and uh, specific nutrients with your insulin, it causes amino acid dumping and actually makes you catabolic and you actually have muscle wasting. So people using it for this benefit of anti-catabolic and it's beating up fat loss are actually losing muscle with it. It's the stupidest thing ever to me. Um, you're going to do some ca some camel diet live cooking streams. Uh, that, that's my plan. Um, yeah. in uh, the near future, that's definitely something I want to do. Um, absolutely. Um, definitely. Whew. All right, guys, I'm going to end this probably soon. I'm getting pretty tired. Um, yeah. What do you say is, uh, I'm not sure if I missed something. Thing. So what cycle would you recommend for a gear newbie? Plus I've been on due to side for six months. Um, <clears throat> depends on the sides you want to avoid. I have an article on my website, 10.com. It's, it's the, the base your cycles on the side you want to avoid. Um, if it was me, see, I know I'm prone to hair loss, but even if I didn't know I was prone to hair loss and I was told certain ones could cause hair loss, I will never touch the hair loss ones. I would never have, and I never would. Um, DECA or D-Ball is my first psychogestion, either either of them separately, you can't go wrong with either and or together. Um, D-Ball, risk of appetite loss, so you may not gain as much, and uh, but it's better strength and fat loss, where DECA is like a completely great anabolic, mild, uh, mild good gains with absolutely like zero sides uh, cosmetically. <clears throat> Might go hair and natty or not. <coughs> um, sorry guys. <coughs> Jesus, don't get and drive from talking so much. Um, my uh, my opinion would be no. Um, the one thing I hate about these things is that when somebody's like on the verge of possibly being natty, is that um, the you know what I mean? Somebody could look insanely small, and you ask natty or not, it's like, oh, he could be on tons of gear, right? So it's like you know, would people take that shortcut? Absolutely. Um, and you know, they might be on gear and they might not look it, but. I believe there definitely is a point where you cannot, obviously everybody agrees, there's a point where you cannot get to a certain size without gear. Um, one thing though that is tricky, I've never studied Mike's physique close enough, 
but there is a lot of people so he's tall so that makes it more difficult too um sorry not more difficult well more or less likely there is so many people where especially when they're short when they're solo in pictures it will look huge and look massive and great and then when they are uh, next to somebody of normal size, somebody that's like 5'8 or 5'10, they literally look like a child. You're like, wow. So in a picture, so their arms look 18 inches. They look great. They look big. They look lean. But next to a child, they actually look like they have 13 inch arms and stuff like that because they're so short. And those guys are good examples of like, wow, this guy probably is natural. It's just by himself. He looked much bigger. And when he's actually next to a normal sized human, you just see that he's a leaner human. Um, so Mike, I've never st not studied intensively, but you know, what I have seen of him, he, yeah, he looks too, too big and too lean to hold, hold that, uh, lean muscle mass. Um, Aaron Curtis is one of my favorite examples of somebody who I believe to be truly lean and who I've known for uh, natural and who I've known for a long time due to multiple factors. One, when he leans up, he shrinks insanely when you see his stage photos. Two, he's been the same size since he was like 17. So he's not progress. Three, when you see him besides more other, you know, when he's bulked up, he holds his mass well. I feel like he's like the upper limit of that genetic uh, natural potential. And d due to those reasons, uh, mainly. Can you tell me more about proper water intake in the morning and during the day? I read something like four to five liters on a day on your post on Facebook. The water intake completely individual, completely depends on the foods. If you're eating a lot of fruits with high water content, your water your water intake may be a lot less. I, I don't think I've ever suggested four to five liters for, for most people. When you're pushing at a gallon plus, you're depleting, you're dehydrating yourself, you're flushing out so many electrolytes, you could make yourself catabolic, you know, shut down your metabolism. I most tell people to go by thirst. Uh, completely individual. It depends on the fruit intake and stuff like that. Go by thirst. Your body has that mechanism for a reason and ensure you're getting proper electrolytes and try and get a lot of your, uh, water from food as well. Uh, thanks for all the info. No problem. It is Philly, Philly Heath bar, uh, natty. Uh, I would say Philly Heath is 100% natural. Um, yeah, because he is, uh, I don't know. He's an Olympia contender and they drug test at the Olympia. So I'd have to say he's, he is a hundred percent natural. That's my opinion though. Um, but yeah, Whew, that is a lot of freaking talking. Um, 116 minute stream. Okay. Guys, I think I'm going to end it. Um, feeling wore out freaking uh social vampire effect right now <laughs> talking so much um yeah so um usually when i'm about to end it like a question pops up and no question is popping up i feel like the second i'm right about to end it the question is going to pop up Whew. i gotta stop talking um okay no questions guys i think that means i'm going to end it um what do you say? Jesus. Okay, guys, I'm going to end. <laughs> uh, so again, I appreciate everybody watching. Uh, appreciate coming, uh, joining. I'm going to try and live stream daily, uh, answer questions. Go to my website, guys, tn.com. Uh, check out my articles, um, just for, for anybody new who's, who's just joining and read what I'm about and then go to Facebook and search Ti the Talking Camel and I have a lot more articles and more older articles there and you'll see a lot of uh, old info and a lot of things to uh, learn, I guess, more about uh, what I preach, like the health aspects and things I've helped cure and eliminate health alignments and stuff like that. Um, you know, and so if you have any questions about that stuff for the next live stream, uh, definitely check out uh, my pages um, and appreciate sharing, you know, forums, Facebook groups, whatever, stuff like that. Sharing definitely helped me, uh, you know, get my stuff out there. So again, appreciate joining, guys. Um, yeah, um, hopefully I'll be on tomorrow. All right, guys, uh, take care. <laughs>